Welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to classify the joints in the human body. And so the joints are usually classified based on the connective tissue that are there between the articulating bones. And so if you have cartilage, fibrous tissue, or you have a synovial lining, and the classification changes. And so there are usually three types of joints. You have synovial joints, cartilaginous joints, and fibrous joints. Cartilaginous joints are divided further into primary or secondary and so you have the synovial joint which actually has a synovial lining or what we call the synovial membrane that lines the cavity and then you have between the two ends of the bone you have a synovial cavity and that synovial cavity has synovial fluid now at the ends of the bone you have these cups of cartilage known as articular cartilage now, articular cartilage is hyaline cartilage with one exception. It doesn't have a perichondrium. So, this articular cartilage receives nutrition from this synovial fluid. And then outside, you have what you call the articular capsule. So, there are many varieties of synovial joints. You have the planar synovial joint, an example being the acromioclavicular joint and the proximal tibiofibular joint. Then you have the pivot joint, an example being the atlantoaxial and the proximal radioalna joint. Then you have the ball and socket, which are usually on the proximal joint, so the hip and the shoulder. Then you have the saddle joint, where you have the sternoclavicular joint being an example. Then you have the cellar variety, that is the patellofemoral joint. And then you have the condylar variety for the tibiofemoral articulation of the knee. So that is the acromioclavicular joint, and so we classify this as a planar joint. So remember, in a planar joint, what you have are two flat surfaces of bone. Then you have the pivot joint here, that is the proximal radial ulna. And the main thing, remember, is that there is this axis of rotation. So there is a point where there is a lot of rotation that occurs. And so the same concept applies. This is the atlantoaxial joint. So this is the dense or the odontoid process. Okay. And that is part of this C2 vertebrae, also known as the axis. And this is the C1 vertebrae, known as the atlas. And this is the atlatoaxial joint. So here, you can see there is this axis of rotation. So this gives you the ability to actually say no. When you twist your head sideways as you say no, you are actually activating the rotation of the atlantoaxial joint. Then you have the sternoclavicular joint showing you that saddle appearance so remember this uh, this socket here is the saddle okay resembling the saddle of a horse that uh, saddle that you used to sit on the horse and then now this is the uh, clavicular end of the bone then here what you have is the patellofemoral joint you have the same trochlear groove of the distal femur that almost looks like a saddle okay and then you have the patella bone coming to sit here and so this is known as a cellar variety. Sometimes it's interchangeably used with a saddle uh, name. So sometimes we call it cellar or saddle. Now, for the cartilaginous joint, it can either be primary or secondary. Now, if it is primary, we call that a synchondrosis. And usually what you have is cartilage between the two bones. And the type of cartilage is highland cartilage. So the best is the joint between the ribs and the sternum, what we call the sternocostal joint or sometimes uh, the epiphyseal growth plate when it's there so before the fusion occurs so you have bone on one side bone on the other side and then you have hyaline cartilage uh, on the growth plate and so this epiphyseal growth plate or this epiphyseal plate is actually an example of a synchondrosis then the secondary cartilaginous joint has fibrocartilage in between the two bones and here we call it a symphysis there's a mental symphysis between the two halves of the manubrium. Then you have the pubic symphysis between the two pubic bones of the pelvis. Then also the intervertebral disc. So here you can see the ribs. You can see the sternum. And this is the costal cartilage, the cartilage of the ribs. And this is hyaline cartilage that joins the ribs to the sternum. And so this is an example of a synchondrosis. And here is an example of a symphysis. So this is actually fibrocartilage between two bones. So you have the one pubic bone there, another pubic bone, 
and in between you have fibrocartilage. Same concept here, you have the fibrocartilage of the intervertebral disc and so in between two vertebral bones and so this is considered a secondary cartilaginous joint. Now the fibrous joint, you have the interosseous membrane being between two bones, for example between the tibia and the fibula and the radius and the ulna. Then you have the sutures of the neurocranium and then you have the gomphosis of the tooth socket. So here you have the tibia, this is a posterior view, this is the tibia, that's the fibula and in between of the interosseous membrane. So we consider this to be a fibrous joint or sometimes what we call a syndesmosis. Same concept here, you have the ulna, you have the radius and in between of the interosseous membrane. Here what you have is the neurocranium. So this is the neurocranium and you have the sutures, the coronal suture, the sagittal suture and the lambdoid suture. And so these sutures actually represent a fibrous joint. Then you have the tooth socket. So you have the gomphosis joint between the socket coming from the mandible and the tooth. And so usually here there is some fibrous uh, tissue that connects the tooth to the mandible or the maxilla. So thank you very much. And if there is any question, you can leave them on the comment section below.